What's happening guys? The Comics Kid 2099 here and I have another volume of Wolverine and the X-Men to talk to you guys about. This is volume 7 written by Jason Aaron with art by Pascal Ferry and Nick Bradshaw. This collects issues 30 through 35 and this volume in a lot of ways it's kind of the conclusion of a lot of what Jason Aaron was setting up in this series. I really I'm very curious what he's going to be doing in volume 8 and by the way this is his second to last volume in this series so it makes sense that he's concluding a lot of what he's been setting up for a while now, but it makes me very curious what he will be doing in the next volume. Uh, for those of you who haven't read this, uh, this is the basically the final showdown between the Hellfire Club and Wolverine's sect of X-Men. And they have been the bad guys for this series since volume one. In fact, Jason Aaron even set them up in X-Men Schism, which was kind of the big event that led into this series. So. In fact, they have been the bad guys for the X-Men since before this series even began, and it's pretty clear if you read this series and you read X-Men Schism that Jason Aaron was intending to use them for the long haul when he set them up in X-Men Schism. And this is a really great volume. In fact, very little of it is even set at the Jean Grey School, which is a very interesting choice. Almost all of it is set at the Hellfire Academy, because at the end of the previous volume you had a couple of kids who leave the Jean Grey school to go to the Hellfire Academy and then at the beginning of this volume we've got another kid who goes over there and he doesn't go over there for the reasons that you might think. Uh, I'm going to be spoiling a little bit, but at the end of the previous volume, you had Globe Herman and Idy. I don't remember how to say her last name, but it's the girl who was introduced. She was one of the five lights, and she's been a main focus of this series. Globe Herman and Idy separately both went to go join the Hellfire Club and become students at the Hellfire Academy. And then you have uh, Quentin Quire in this volume. He's curious, okay, why did Idy go? And so he finds out why she went, and so he goes there to try and save her, and things get a little out of hand. They kind of escalate. Uh, he wasn't quite ready for what he finds there, and it's a really solid story. I really enjoyed this a whole lot. Uh, he does, Jason Aaron does a really good job of setting, of concluding a lot of what he has set up in this whole run so far. Uh, for example, Husk. Husk was a character who he was using just a very little bit in some of the earlier volumes, and she left the school, the Jean Grey school, a couple of volumes ago. I don't remember which volume it was. It might have even been during the Avengers vs. X-Men stuff, which would have been like volume 4, and this is volume 7. So. I wasn't thinking that he was going to bring her back. I didn't think that she was going to be coming back at all. I figured that was going to be a dropped plot line that he would just forget to do something with. And he brings her back. And it's a little over the top and a little cartoony what he does with her. But then he concludes all of that in this volume. And I really don't know if he's going to be using her more in volume 8. But he didn't drop that. And I was very surprised to see that he was able to bring that back and do something with it. Also, uh, we've got some stuff going on with the Hellfire Club that's very interesting. Uh, and they are pretty much dealt with as villains. But then you've also got a couple of other villains here who are kind of set up for future use. And I googled around and I could not find that these characters have showed up since this series ended. Or since this volume, rather. Uh, for example, the girl who is uh, the White Queen of the Hellfire Club. I don't remember her name. I think it's Wilhelmina. I, I don't remember her last name. She was basically, she was one of my least favorite members of these this group of kids who are part of the Hellfire Club uh, because she was basically just the psychotic girl who wants to be loved and wants a pony so that she can kill the pony. Uh, it's kind of the typical uh, the typical eight-year-old girl who's a spoiled brat, but she's also psychotic, like turning that trope on its head a little bit. And uh, she is finally made just a little bit interesting here, or rather the potential for what could be done with her is made a little bit interesting here. And I'm, I really wish that Jason Aaron had stayed with the X-Men in some form for a little while longer so that he could have done something with this character because I don't know if anyone else wants to do anything with that character, especially after what happens to her here. I would really love to see her come back, but I don't know if that's ever going to happen or if that's going to be a character who just kind of falls to the wayside and everyone forgets that she exists. Uh, I don't have a whole lot to say here. Uh, this book is pretty solid. And it if you want kind of the ultimate season finale of Wolverine and the X-Men, this is pretty much it. It pretty much covers just about everything that has been set up in this series so far. Uh, so like I said, I'm very curious to see what Volume 8 is going to be like. And it does set up something, I should mention this. Uh, if you have, if you're not aware, Jason Aaron, he also did one volume of Amazing X-Men, which was 
it, you know, if this is the series that focuses on the school and the students at the school with a little bit of focus on the staff, then Amazing X-Men was intended to be the series that focuses exclusively on the staff going on away missions and stuff like that. And that first volume, a little bit of a spoiler here for Amazing X-Men, is titled The Quest for Nightcrawler. And this volume sets that up a little bit. So uh, it's going to be very interesting. I don't know. I'm assuming that he just set that up here so that he could pay that off in Amazing X-Men, which whatever, I kind of wish that he didn't do that because if you're only reading Wolverine and the X-Men and then you see this page and then you don't see Nightcrawler for the rest of the series, that would be a little bit disappointing if you don't know that Jason Aaron also did Amazing X-Men for one volume. But whatever, uh, that's a minor complaint really, especially with a book that's this good. Uh, so, so far, I'm just going to say Wolverine and the X-Men as a series has been really good. And I would say the worst volumes for me, the worst volumes for me were uh, volumes three and five. And they weren't even bad. It's just that they weren't as good as everything else that we've gotten in this series. So I highly recommend that you read this series, especially if you like kind of the the old school uh, plots that take a really long time to percolate and finally pay off. If you like stuff like that, then I would suggest that you read this. In a lot of ways, it kind of reminds me of what Chris Claremont used to do on the X-Men back in the 1980s, where he would set something up, and then 30 or 40 issues later, he would be returning to that subplot, and you'd be like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. And this isn't quite as stretched out as some of the stuff that Claremont did, because Claremont had 16 years on the X-Men, and Jason Aaron was only on Wolverine and the X-Men for like two and a half years or something like that. Uh, actually, more like three or four, I guess. I don't know, because he was on it for about 40 issues. So uh, he didn't have as long on the X-Men as Chris Claremont did, but it's very similar in approach. It's very similar to how Claremont would drop a plot and then wait a very long time before he would pick up on it. Uh, Jason Aaron is kind of sort of doing that, where he's setting up stuff way back in Volume 1, and then he's paying it off in Volume 7, which is quite a long ways down the line. And uh, I really like this series. I really like this volume, and I encourage you guys to pick up this volume. And uh, if you did like this volume, if you did like this review, rather, then uh, next week I'll be reviewing the final volume of Jason Aaron's run on Wolverine and the X-Men, and uh, tomorrow I'll be doing a different kind of video. So if you like this video, then be sure to check out what I'm doing tomorrow. In the meantime, I will see you guys later. Have a great rest of the day.